I'm here with Tammy Everts, a performance evangelist at Radware. Hi, Tammy. Hi, how are you, Lori? I'm doing well. Um, you've been involved with various communities that have been working on uh, web issues that include the vital user experience um, issues that we all talk about today. Um, what's your opinion of the current state of UX on the web? Um, I, I think this is a really interesting time for user experience and for performance. I mean, the UX uh, community has been around, you know, for about 15, 20 years. So it's it's a really established, mature community, and there's a lot of um, a lot of good dialogue in that community about a lot of UX issues. It's just starting to recognize performance, and similarly, I mean, the performance community, which is much uh, younger. Uh, as really only being around and, and, and building for the past you know, four or five years um, is starting to recognize UX as an issue. And I think this is, re this is really interesting and it's a really exciting time you know, to, for me personally because uh, the two communities need to speak to each other. They don't operate in silos. So many aspects of UX mm -hmm. are affected by performance um, positively or negatively. Um, and, and, and same goes around. So I, I, I'm really excited by the fact that these two communities are going to start talking to each other. So I would like to see more UX at future velocities. Uh, I think that we'd like to see that as well. We think it's a, a, an important area, not only for web, but for um, physical devices as well. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot of opportunities to do great stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so talk to me about the research you've done. I mean, have you lo you've looked at human factor component of web performance, haven't you? And, mm -hmm. And, and, and what have you found? Um, well, what I presented yesterday at Velocity was a really interesting new area for us um, because you know, we finally live in a world where we can say, you know, this is definitely a mobile first world. 55% um, of all online retail traffic comes from mobile devices and that helped to, to justify why we want to actually look at the human factor side of how uh, people engage with websites via um, you know, primarily their smartphones. So the research that we just released, um, we tested uh, two e-commerce sites and two travel sites and had our testers uh, you know, strap on EEG devices and eye tracking devices and these devices spoke to each other and we were able to get a moment by moment readout of you know, how people were actually thinking and mm -hmm. feeling. Um, and I should actually retract the word thinking, it's really feeling because this is all happening at a precognitive level. The people aren't, our testers didn't know that they were being tested for performance. They thought they were just looking at a site and seeing how well it functioned, mm -hmm. like aside from, from, from load time. And what we found was that um, when we did side-by-side -side comparison of how people uh, engage with the site uh, when it was re kind of ran at normal speed and how they engaged with the site when we throttled it by 500 milliseconds, so introduced a 500 millisecond network delay, mm -hmm. was that um, frustration peaked at about 26%, so 26% uh, higher level of frustration at the browsing phase. So this really cognitively demanding phase wow. when you're actually looking at your at products and trying to decide and you're comparison shopping and looking at features. Um, so to have uh, just that 500 millisecond network delay affect your frustration level by, by you know, increase it by 26% was really huge. Um, and similarly, we found that we also looked at emotional engagement. And so that is, um, if frustration is a, a, a negative attribute, mm -hmm. Um, emotional engagement is a positive attribute. It means people are excited and they're feeling very involved and engaged by what they're doing. And we found that with um, when we slow down the site, that engagement decreased by 8%. So it, it's not as dramatic sounding a number right. as the 26%, but actually that, that's, a significant, that's a significant number and it affects it really affects um, what people take away with them as far as the brand perception goes. And we, um, that was highlighted for us when we did exit interviews with the subjects, um, just about what did you think about the site, what did it make you think about the company, That's, and ask those sorts of really kind of soft questions. Um, we uh, highlighted, or sorry, isolated all of the adjectives that people used, uh, for example, for the Tesco site, which was one of the sites that we that we tested, mm -hmm. um, when it ran at normal speed, and uh, we also isolated all of the adjectives that people used for the slower site, and we fed each of these sets of adjectives into a word cloud generator, and it was phenomenal. I mean, again, these people didn't know that they were mm -hmm. being tested on performance at all, and we saw um, in the, the slower, slower site 
they were calling the site clunky, they were calling it hard to use, they were calling it harder to navigate, um, they were calling it ugly. So things that had nothing to do with performance, it just had to do with um, perception of brand, uh, perception of how well the navigation worked, were deeply affected by by uh, just uh, just performance. So that's really interesting because I was going to ask you whether there's a difference between the the user experience, so created by the designer, mm -hmm. and poor performance, whether it's your network connectivity or how fast the page loads. Mm -hmm. So you're actually saying that the user experience is affected by sort of physical limitations yeah. of the site. Yeah. So there, there really isn't a difference there, right? No, and the, uh, we found some other things. Like, And this, this again points to why we can't look at performance and UX as being in separate silos. Um, we also found that for some sites, if the, if the site uh, was faster, and this didn't happen every time, um, but in, I think it was actually just in one instance, we found that um, the site that was faster actually had an increase in frustration levels. And the reason for that, you had to actually look at how the page itself performed. And uh, w the, the closest we could deduce was that there were so many moving parts on the page and so many bits and pieces that were flying around and you know fly out menus and things like that, that when everything loaded and was just sort of dumped on the screen really quickly, it actually, people's frustration level peaked because they're bombarded with all of these decisions oh, and all of this visual stimulus. So fast can sometimes be negative. Yeah, it, well, it, it highlights, uh, to me, it's not that fast is negative, it's that it highlights problems with the design. Mm -hmm. So the issue there, you have to look at the design itself and think, well, what's wrong with this design that when it's being served faster, because, you know, my mentor is still faster is just always better. Um, you know, why, why is this design just wrong? It's not actually fulfilling on the promise that faster pages have. All right, that's some, some great research for people to review. Now, you said it's been released. Um, well, we released the slides mm -hmm. yesterday, okay. so and you know our key findings are in the slides. Uh, the report itself, uh, we are going to be releasing within the next week or so. So mm -hmm. if you know people want to um, download it, they can go to the Radware site. It'll be it'll be featured on our homepage, or they can go to to my blog, Web Performance Today, and great, be there. Great. So I know you've you've talked about that you've studied mobile users. Um, would you also talk about what you've discovered and how it compares to desktop usage? I mean, what sort of differences are there? So the, the research that we did, the mobile research that, that we just did, it was actually based on a desktop study from three and a half years ago. And uh, I, I, more inspired by than based on, really. Um, and three years ago, uh, there was a study that was released in the UK um, that was about desktop web stress. And it found uh, that for desktop users who uh, were served pages where uh, they had uh, basically comparing two groups of, of, of testers. So there was a group that was served pages um, that were, went through a five megabyte connection and then users that were served pages that went through a two megabyte connection. So throttle down quite mm -hmm. significantly. And they found that frustration levels peaked at, or sorry, that it wasn't it wasn't frustration. Sorry, I'm going to go back for a second. So they studied two groups of mm -hmm. uh, of, of testers, right? Um, and the key finding was that uh, for the people who were served the slower pages, uh, they had actually to concentrate 50% harder during key uh, critical uh, uh, points in the in the transaction. Wow, that's really interesting. And so but it's just sort of based on that. That was what, what inspired us like, to see, well, okay, well, what's the difference going to be with mobile? And so it was, it, was, it was gratifying to find that actually mobile and desktop users are a lot more similar than we, than we you know, than, than a lot of people yeah. expect, yeah. Great. So how does all this information affect what you're doing in your business today? And, so, and how do developers and designers affect change based on the information that you're releasing? Um, how it affects my business, like I rather. Or, or no, their business. So <laughs> oh, other did, people's business, okay. Other people, so if I'm a designer, I'm a developer, how does what you're saying affect my business? How can I affect change, positive change with my business? Um, well, it's interesting because um, the, uh, Courtney Nash gave a really great keynote this morning that was just saying that, you know, m optimizing for mobile is hugely complex, you know, much more complex than desktop, like just the order of magnitude the, due to device fragmentation alone mm -hmm. is, is, is enormous. And so it's easy to get overwhelmed and feel like, you know, you're just kind of uh, drowning in the sea of complexity. Um, and she ended on the same note that, that you know, I would, I, I would kind of, subscribe to as well, which is that really it's opportunity. So right now we're kind of in the murk, like mobile sites we know are 
painfully slow. In mm -hmm. another study that we released at Radware um, a few weeks ago, uh, we tested mobile sites over 4G on, on, on uh, smartphones and, and tablets, and we found that on the smartphone, I mean, the median page loaded in almost eight seconds. Right. It's not, that's not good. You know, ideally, you want to go for four seconds or less, mm -hmm. or, you know. And not horizontally scroll, too, right? Not horizontally <laughs> scroll, and ideally, no pinch and zoom. You know, you, you want it to actually just render in your, in your, your window. Um, so. I mean, I see a lot. I, I see a lot of opportunity for people. To, like, there's nowhere to go but up, really. Mm -hmm. So, um, I would say that if I were, if I were to give uh, developers, designers, um, any kind of, you know, my thoughts on this, mm -hmm. uh, it would be to to work together really closely w with performance as kind of a shared responsibility. Right now, um, and I, I, you know, in my past life as a UX person, I was totally guilty of this. You come up with your design prototype, you work with your designer, you do it in Photoshop, and you put it on the screen with some hot beautiful. spots, and it's beautiful, and it all loads at the same time, and it's fantastic. And your testers come in, and they they click your hot spots, and you move some buttons around, and you know that you get it, you get it right, and then you pat each other on the back, and you call it a day. Um, and in you know in real life, it doesn't work like that. You know, it, uh, some objects need to render faster than others. Pages get cruftified, so they're they're just you know kind of uh, janking all over the place mm -hmm. while while they're loading, um, and to me, what this signals is just that there's a there's a, a disconnect between what de designers and UX people are doing and what developers are doing. And it's not I, I don't say that as a criticism because you know again I've been there. I just say it as a you know if you don't realize there's a problem, and part of the reason why you don't realize it's a problem is because you're using. Uh, a really great computer right. sitting next to your server. You know your site's coming from your browser's cache because you visited you know your own site ten thousand times. You know you're just not going to see that right. experience. So, um, so, so first have some awareness of just what the issues are. You know go out in the real world, do do real user testing, um, recognize what types of systems and, and connection speeds that real users are actually using, and then bring you know bring your your teams closer together so that it's not just a design and UX team passing off this beautiful design over to developers and saying, here, just build it, put it out there. And and it's I, I've said this elsewhere, it's 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 kind of unfair because it really puts the burden of performance on developers. You know, when we when I see people who are talking at these conferences, really what they're dealing with a lot is they've inherited a page or a set of pages or a massive dynamic site and it has performance problems and they're going backwards to fix it rather than kind of taking a forward-looking approach. So, uh, you know, for me as somebody, I, li I like to build things and I like the idea that, I, you know, you can do it right from step one with proper planning, that you, you know, you, you, you start that, you build your team and you have developers involved from, from the very beginning of, the, of the, the conceptual and prototyping process. Great advice. Well, thank you very much, Tammy, and I'm sure that everyone will check out the research on the Redware site. Thanks. Thanks for having me.